Okay, so this, um, this video, we're going to talk about what happens when a contract application is sent to a new applicant. They get an email that looks like this, onboarding notification. <clears throat> it says copy this invitation code. So they double click here and then click here to get started. Okay, so it loads up their information here. They paste in their invitation code and create a password and register. Okay, so it talks about, gives them a little bit of information here about what they're going to be providing. Okay, so we're going to begin the application. Okay, so you can see here that they have the option to change their full legal name. So in this case, we'll call him James. Okay, and now they're asking for insurance license information. We're going to do it this two times, just so you can see what it looks like both directions, okay? So if starting off, we're going to say we do not have a residence life insurance, and we have not passed our state exam. If they say they are not enrolled in a course, it says, um, upon completion, your agency owner will send you access to get a discounted rate on the course, and they can continue. If they are enrolled in a course, then they have to provide proof. This would require a screenshot from Excel or License Coach or another similar site like that where you might be using to get through their pre-licensing. If this is that they don't have their license yet, but they have passed their exam, they can provide uh, some evidence of having passed the exam and then this will just it, this will just save their spot here and it'll come back later. If they do have their license, then it's going to ask for their license number, their NPN number, where their resident is, and when it was issued, and whether they're doing business as an individual or a business entity. This is really important right here because and and after they have their license, they'll come back and update this. So everybody fills out this screen before the contract is submitted um, the last time to Symmetry. But most people, 99.9% .9 of new agents, have an individual license. They're not already operating as an agency, and they're joining as a business and bringing on multiple agents. So make sure that when you're walking through this, they are selecting individual in those cases. So we are going to say that we do not have a license. We have not passed our exam and we are not enrolled. Just so we can move on here. Okay, legal questions and responses are explanations for contracting and appointment requests. Have you ever been charged misdemeanor or felonies? Have you ever been investigated? Are you alleged to have any in any fraud? found engaged in fraud, read these questions thoroughly. If you answer yes to any of these questions, it's just going to ask you to provide more information. They all do that. Okay, they, uh, they respond to this agreement. To the best of my knowledge, this information is, is full, complete, and truthful. Okay, address history. Confirm your current address, 123 Main Street. Okay. 
Let's see what this does if I do next. So I put down that we've been at that address for 11 years. It should just take us on to the next stage. Yes, it did. So let's go back and change the, the time field on that. If someone has been in, ad, in an address for less than five years, I believe, it's going to ask what your previous addresses are. Okay, so there's the, there's the timeline on there. Seven years. So if they've lived at their current address for more than seven years, they won't have to provide previous address information. Okay, this next phase is the anti-money laundering course. If they have not completed a LIMRA AML training, which would be unusual for a new agent, um, they would say no. And do you have an American Amicable AML certificate? If they've not done that yet, which is more likely, they would say no. And now they provide a link to the American Amical AML course. And it, it gives you some notes here about how to actually begin that AML course. So we click on this link. It's going to open up in a new tab. Just to confirm, it says, if you do not have a national producer number, check unlicensed, leave agent number blank. Okay, and I'm gonna click continue. Now this is also important. The name that you list on the anti-money laundering course must match exactly with the legal name that you entered at the beginning of the application. If I had put Jim Halpert, here, that would not be the legal name, and that's not the way I'm submitting my my application over here. And so the AML will not be accepted, and your agent will have to go back and resubmit the anti-money laundering course under the corrected name. And I can change the name here once we get to that point, and then we continue. Okay, I'm going to skip over this, but this is what the anti-money laundering course looks like. They're going to need to read through the screens. And then there's a quiz. Follow through each of the sections to complete the quiz, and then you will get a certificate of completion. All right, once the course is complete, we come back here and say, do you have an American Amical AML certificate? Say yes, and we can upload a copy. Okay. That little X does not mean something bad has happened. It's the option to delete the file. I don't think that's a very helpful icon, by the way. Next. Okay, here is the FINRA section. If they are registered, should be unusual for an, a new unlicensed agent. They can enter their broker and CRD numbers. Most people are not, so they say no. Okay, this question is about ENO insurance. While ENO is heavily recommended for all new agents, uh, if you do not intend to, to uh, start selling IULs or annuities or DFL at the beginning, then um, it's not necessary in your first couple months. Any new agents focusing on mortgage protection can hold off on errors and omissions until a later time. That's going to be an up upline decision. So get with your agency owner if you have any questions. For here, we're going to say that we do not have ENO insurance. If I wanted more info, I could go to CalSurance. The link is right here. 
they have a special sponsored ENO program. It's going to give you the best rates for your ENO coverage if you want them. If I say yes, I do have, I would just upload a copy of my ENO certificate. Okay, this is very important. Now we are at step eight for the electronic funds transfer. I would provide the routing and account numbers for my bank. Okay, checking in savings. Okay, now when you upload a copy of a voided check or bank authorization letter, they can either take a, um, a, a check out of their checkbook and write void on it, take a picture and upload it here. They can also call their bank and let their bank know that they are setting up direct deposit for the account and they need a direct deposit authorization form. Banks do this all the time for new people or for people who are setting up new jobs. And so the information that the bank will provide in that direct deposit authorization form uh, will have everything that Symmetry needs to get this set up. N namely, it has to have their full name, the routing and account number. It needs to be on company letterhead and um, I maybe even their address. I forget. But most of them are going to have, have that on it. What they can't have is like a piece of paper where someone hand wrote the routing and account number and signed their name. That that will not work. It must be uh, an official document. Okay, so I'm just going to upload a file so we have something in there. And then this is only going to allow them to, what you're doing here is um, allowing Symmetry to set up your direct deposit information with all of the carriers and with Symmetry for their bonuses. They're going to use this information for all the carriers and their deposits. Um, they do have the authority to adjust the credit entry in the case of an error or a refund. So they have the option to withdraw and deposit. But just to be clear, you're not giving Symmetry permission to do whatever they want with your bank account, right? Okay, and then you sign here. Okay, this is the Assurance Bay signature agreement. Uh, it authorizes that your signature is going to be a legal signature on all the contracts and everything that they send. Um, you're just authorizing Assurance Bay to handle all of those things. Okay, at this point, the onboarding application is completed. I'm gonna double check here uh, on my agency owner portal, see what that looks like. Let's switch this over here. Okay, so right here you can see this is my new agent, Jim Halpert, and he submitted on the 19th, and it is pending contract signature. Okay, so it says nice work. Before we can continue, let's go back to this screen.
There's one last step. You need to sign your independent contractor agreement. Review and sign this document as soon as possible. Okay, so let's sign the contract. And this will show up in tasks. So if they decide to leave the application and come back, they can click on my tasks and that'll bring them to this page. Okay, this is the option, gives them the option to review the details. We can review and sign. All right, this is the part that I'm not going to sign because this is a legal document. So this is your, this is your independent contractor agreement. It establishes you as a 1099 contractor. Um, please have your agents read this at least once through, best if they understand it. Okay, and so if I were a real person, I would sign this and then that would uh, complete my onboarding application process. Um, and I would be officially a incoming symmetry agent. So the application is not complete until that signature is complete. They can go to application status to check on the status of uh, their application. So this pending contract signature, you can see what that means. They've not completed that final, uh, that final signature. One thing that I wanted to um, to do before we finished, and I forgot, honestly, was at each step at the bottom of the section there. Yeah, I can't get back in. At each step at the bottom of the application, there was the uh, previous and next button, and then a link that said save and continue later. Um, so when that happens, if they, if they run out of time and they need to come back to complete the application, always choose that save and continue later link. And then they can come to their email where they will have a, a, a link like this one that says continue your application. And there will be a link in that email to, um, to continue the application where they left off. So let's log out here. And when they try to log in, okay, if they have not completed the application, it will show up as um, as the the onboarding application is it incomplete, and they will have to start over. So it's really important that they go to that email and click the link there to continue the, to resume their application or else it will show up as blank. I hope that's helpful. I meant to show you while we were going through it, but I forgot. So maybe I'll make a, a follow-up and attach that to this. Okay, so this completes the uh, training on uh, contract applications for new agents. Thanks for watching.